President Trump says his tax plan will be a middle-class miracle. It slashes the tax on corporations from 35 to 20 percent. For individuals and families, it reduces the number of tax brackets from 7 to 3. It doubles the standard deduction for families. Now, for families, that means no income tax on the first $24,000 of income. It also eliminates the estate tax, which is paid by people who own a home worth more than $5.5 million. And the plan needs support from Congress in order to be approved. And joining us this morning is Congressman Lloyd Doggett to talk about why he's against this plan. And, Congressman, it's good to see you again. From time to time, the Congressman joins us here on Weekend Day Break to uh, update his constituents on what he's doing. Good morning. Great to be with you, Jenny. Good to meet you. Uh, good to see you again, meet you. <laughs> I met you like 20 years ago. But uh, recently, you actually got to meet with the President. Yes. Uh, Tuesday, I met with uh, President Trump and Vice President Trump, uh, Vice President Pence over in the Roosevelt Room at the White House with some of their advisors in my role as the lead Democrat on the tax policy uh, subcommittee. Uh, it was a professional meeting. I was, yeah, a little how was that? I was a little reluctant about it because, as you know, my views about the president uh, are very strong. Yeah, you weren't going to uh, go, right? Uh, I did not go to his inauguration, and I've declined all the social visits that I've been invited to. But this was uh, an opportunity to talk not only tax policy, but to raise with him my concern about what's happening to our dreamers, 800,000 talented young people. So the first thing I said is that I agree with the president of Microsoft that we ought to defer tax policy until we've resolved this pro problem that President Trump created for 800,000 young people who could face uh, deportation from this country and have so much to contribute here. On tax policy, uh, I just find what he told me sitting across the table like this about this bill bears little resemblance to the bill. He said there won't be any tax cuts for the rich. Well, the first study wow. that's come out has said if you're in the top 1%, you get a $129,000 tax cut, and that doesn't even include the state tax changes that are made. In Central Texas, and you earn in the forty-nine dollars to $86,000 range, you'll get about $55 a month. So, you know, it's not, you know, everybody's pleased to get a little bit, but it's a very unbalanced tax proposal, and it's not what President Trump told me it would be. Right. Okay. But can we not at least agree that there is some reform going on? Are we not happy that there is something going on, well, Congressman? Well, everybody would like to see some forward movement. The question is whether it really does put money in the pockets of people that need it and it strengthens our economy, and I don't think this plan does. The other big problem is that it appears that it adds over $2.5 trillion to the national debt. We can't. We, we had a bill up recently that I worked on on child abuse. We were told we'd like to do more, but we can't do this bill because uh, it will add to the debt. Well, how can we add two and a half trillion dollars and just say it doesn't amount to anything? The likelihood this tax bill will pay for itself is about the same as uh, Mexico paying for that wall the president <laughs> promised. All right, let me take a little time and let me read to you what Congressman sure. Roger Williams, a Republican in Austin, sent us this statement. Now, this is what he has to say about this. This is a once-in-a-generation opportunity, and I am confident in the direction that President Trump and Republicans have taken in order to provide relief to the American people. Your response? I'm confident that what President Trump says is not what President Trump does. Remember the health care plan that fortunately was stopped that was going to provide better coverage to everybody, cover everyone, and cost less? Well, it turned out it took away health care from millions of people. And the same is true of this tax bill. Uh, they're talking about it being a middle class tax cut. It is a boon to those at the very top, borrowing from the Chinese and the Saudis to pay for it, threatening Social Security and Medicare when you add that much debt to our country. From here, there is significant cut for those at the top. Okay. Now, but what about just lowering the, uh, the tax rate for the corporate tax rate? Is that not a good thing? Because theoretically and hopefully that means corporations can invest into the economy. Well, that's uh, a good thing, right? Uh, I support the concept of reducing the rate, the statutory rate. Of course, most corporations uh, that are multinationals, they don't pay the statutory rate. Their effective rate through all the tax gimmicks they have uh, is much lower. So Pfizer pays a significantly lower rate than, say, people's uh, uh, pharmacy, people's here in Austin or any of our independent pharmacies. That's not fair. I'd like to fix that. 
there's not much reform here. And I think uh, what is happening is that this bill, the way it's drafted, will actually encourage the, the shipment of more jobs out of America rather than stimulating our economy. All right, one second. I want to play sure. a soundbite from uh, Kevin Brady. Last sure. week, the chairman of the House and Ways Committee uh, discussed what the tax plan means for Americans. Here's what Representative Kevin Brady had to say. We're closer than ever to finishing what we started for the American people. For the middle class workers and families and the Main Street job creators merely struggling to get by today. This is our year to chart a new course. All right, you were at the same meeting that... Yes, uh, uh, Kevin chairs the committee that I serve as the, the ranking Democrat on tax policy. Uh, but I think maybe we were at a different meeting <laughs> uh, because uh, this bill does not do what he and President Trump are saying it does. If it did, I'd be for it. I want more jobs. I want to stimulate the American economy, but I don't want to do it by borrowing from abroad nor supporting a tax bill that once again, the other ones is not much about reform, but it is all about trickle-down economics. And, of course, you guys have until, what's your deadline, December? To well, there's this really, out? they're saying they want to rush this through as they did health care, that they want to present this bill and, and pass it through our committee in the next 30 days. I'd hope they had learned something from the health care fiasco, that if you really want to move forward, you try to do it in a bipartisan manner, and they're not doing that. They're going to force through their version of this bill. As, as I said just after the meeting, uh, their idea of a bipartisan approach is after the tax train leaves the station, some Democrats can hop on the caboose. And I don't think many are willing to do that. You're not going to hop on the caboose? Not me. Of course, They're going to jump have, in front of it? We don't have cabooses anymore uh, out there on the trains, in fact. And uh, I don't think we'll have people trying to jump on the rear of this train. Congressman, that means it means we have to wrap up. We appreciate your Thank time. You. Always welcome here on Weekend Day Break. And we'll be right back. Cars ready? <laughs>